In this demonstration, I'll show you how to solve optimization problems in calculus. This is part three of the series. As discussed in part one and part two, these are the steps to solving optimization problems. The question in this video asks, consider a cylindrical tin can, which is to be constructed by joining the ends of a rectangular piece of metal to form the cylindrical sides, and then attaching circular pieces to form the top and the bottom. There are seams around the perimeter of the top and the bottom, and there is one seam down the side surface. Suppose the volume of the can is 1,000 centimeters cubed. Also, suppose the cost of the material is $1 per every meter squared, and the cost of the seam is 20 cents per meters. Find the dimensions of the can that will minimize the cost. The first formula that you should create is one that relates the volume of the cylinder. Now, depending on your teacher, this may be provided to you, and it is shown right here. So we can say that the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. And we can replace this V with 1000. The dimensions that we're looking for are the radius and the height. Now, to give you a visual of what's going on, we have a cylinder, your typical cylinder, and it has been created by attaching a rectangle, which is the sleeve of the cylinder, and there is a seam that connects the rectangle together. And also, these top and bottom parts also have seams. Next, we know that the cost is equal to, so the surface area times $1, plus there's also a cost for the seams, and that cost is 20 cents times this, which is equal to your height, and also this red thing and this red thing. So h plus 2 times the perimeter of the circle. And if you recall, the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r. That being said, we now have two formulas that we can work with. We have this one, and we have this one. So what I'm going to do next is Isolate for either R or H in this formula. And it really doesn't matter which one you isolate for. I'm going to isolate for H because it's the easier of the two. So I'm going to bring this right here. If I isolate for H, I end up with 1,000 pi R squared is equal to my H. And now I'm going to take this H value and plug it into this formula. So let's do that. And of course, I'm going to replace SA with the following. So we have the cost is equal to 2 pi r, and I'm going to replace that h with this, 1,000 over pi r squared, plus 2 pi r squared. And we're going to multiply that by 1, so it just gives us the following, plus 0 0.2 I'm going to replace this h with 1,000 over pi r squared plus 2 times 2 pi r. The next thing that I'll do is simplify. Now you'll notice that this r will cancel out, this pi will cancel out with one of these r's and this pi, leaving you with c is equal to 2,000, and we can expand this. And if we do that, we end up with the following. Now we can go on to finding the derivative of c. That's not too hard to do. Remember, this is the same thing as saying 2,000 r to the power of negative 1. That goes down. r to the power of negative 2, which means negative 2,000 over r squared. So the derivative of this is negative 2,000 over r squared using the power rule. The derivative of this is equal to 4 pi r. This 2 goes down. And the derivative of this will be a little more complicated. It is the following. I'll do it down here. 200 over pi r to the power of negative 2. 
we're going to bring this negative 2 down, which makes it negative 2 times 200 is negative 400 over pi. And this becomes r to the power of negative 3, which goes down here. So negative 400 pi r to the power of 3 plus this r goes away because of the power rule. We end up with 4 pi over 5. The next thing that we have to do is solve for r. Now, to solve for r, we have to set c is equal to 0. And the best way to do this, now since this is not a, a simple equation to work with, would be to use technology at this point because it is a complicated equation. So if you use technology at this point, it should look something like this. where you plug in your equation and you find out your r value and you get two r values. You get one that is negative and you get one that is positive. Now oftentimes you have to choose the one that makes the most sense in your question. You can't have a negative radius but you can have a positive one so we're going to use 5.37 as a radius. That said, we can now find whether it is going to be a local minimum or a maximum. Keep in mind that there were restrictions in the original equation for C. Now remember, the original equation for C looked like this. And according to this term, R cannot equal to zero. We must also keep that in mind when using the closed interval method when it comes to creating that chart. That being said, we need to find values of R that are less than zero, values of R that are in between zero and 5.37, and we need to find values of r that are greater than 5.37. Here I have an example of when r is less than 0. And I end up with a number that is negative. Next, I'll try a number that is in between 0 and 5.37. And I get a negative number. And lastly, I'll try a number that is greater than 5.37. This can be any arbitrary number. I'm going to use 40. And I end up with a positive number. Now the fact that this is negative, it was decreasing. This was negative, so decreasing. And then there was an increase. So what this suggests is that 5.37 does occur at a minimum. Now, to give you a visual, the function, whatever it looked like, was decreasing up until 5.37. I'm not too sure of the y, and it started to increase. So therefore, that is a local minimum. So that being said, we found the radius, and we can find the height using this equation as well. And here we have one that's isolated for h already. So I'm going to plug in that number that we found to the power of 2 gives us 11.03. So to conclude, the height has to be 11.03 meters and the radius has to be 5.37 meters. So there you have it. Another optimization problem solved. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.